Welcome to Electron Line. In the last video, we showed you how to find the charge on capacitor as a function of time, and we did that by using Kirchhoff's rules, going around the whole circuit, adding up all the voltages across each of the devices. We had a inductor, we had a capacitor, we add up the voltage across the two devices, and we know that that always adds up to zero. When we solved that equation, we found we had a second order differential equation for which the solution was that the charge was equal to the total charge in capacitor when it's fully charged times the cosine of omega t plus a phase angle. If we then assume the phase angle to be zero, then we can draw the oscillatory uh, indication of the charge in capacitor, full charge, zero charge, negative full charge, zero charge, positive full charge, and so forth, as charge goes back and forth back and forth between one side and the other side of the capacitor, going through the inductor, and so we have what we call an oscillatory circuit. Also realizing that the angular frequency of the oscillatory motion is 1 over the square root of L times C, L being the size of the inductor, and C being the size of the capacitor, which gives us the frequency of oscillation and the period being 1 over the frequency. But what if we want to know the current at any point in time in a circuit like this? Well, we realize that the current can be defined in terms of I is equal to dQ dt. And since we already defined the charge as a function of time, to find the current, all we have to do is take the derivative of that. So therefore, this is equal to the ddt of Q times the cosine of omega t plus phi like that. So if we do that, we then know that the current as a function of time in the circuit is going to be equal to Q times the derivative of the cosine would be the minus sine of omega t plus phi times the derivative of the angle, which is times omega. So therefore, we can say that I as a function of time is equal to minus omega Q times the sine of omega t plus phi. All right, so how would we graph that? Well, we know that the magnitude, of course, will be omega times q. Omega is 1 over the square root of L times c. And also we have a negative sign here and the sine. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the sine of omega t plus phi. So let's assume the sine would start over here. And it would go like this. Let's see here. When it reaches, it would go like that. So we go this way. Um, hmm. You got to be careful here to make sure I do this correctly. Reach a maximum value. Ah, there we go. There was, I'm wrong. I reach a maximum value here. Goes back to here. Goes back to there. And like that. So we're basically, we're shifted um, about a quarter of a cycle to the right. And of course, since I have a negative sign here, negative sign, I need to flip that around. I use a different color. When I flip that around, my function would look like this. And so the red line represents the current. So I, as a function of time, is the red line. And you can see that when the capacitor is fully charged, right here, current is equal to zero. When the capacitor has zero charge on it, right there, then we have a maximum current. And here again, when we have zero charge in capacitor, we have a maximum current in the other direction. So you can see that the red line here represents the current as a function of time, and the black line represents the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. And so now we have a way to describe both the current and the charge in an LC circuit as a function of time. And that's how we do that.